today I'm going to one of the most famous tourist scenery sites called the Liang Park, which is basically a family place of one of the richest people in the Qing Dynasty. The Liang Park is in a city called Foshan in the very southern part of China, the place I was born. So let's check that out. Being cooked up in the city for too long, it would be nice to get away from the skyrocket for a little while. And when you see these lovely traditional looking buildings, it means the Liang Garden isn't far away. I imagined this was exactly what the city looked like a hundred years ago. I usually don't go out on a rainy day like this, but today I just prefer to see the family house in the rain. It's like having movement and music in the background. I wasn't sure what I was looking at when I went inside. I know China has got a long history and rich culture, but it's so cliche, I've already taken it for granted. And sometimes I thought the advance of the economy and the international status is more urgent and important than reminiscing about the olden days. But walking through the archway, my focus started to shift and I began to notice how everything was brought so closely together. Between me and the buildings, the buildings and the trees, the trees and the lake. And then I arrived at a small museum and it was clearly refurbished from the old house. So I went. What are these? Okay, these are 10,000 stone seals written in one single Chinese character called Shou. And Shou means longevity, living a long life. But they come in different forms because people in the past invented thousands of ways of writing this character. So in a way, it represented the evolution of Chinese writing. And they are like tiny little pictures. On the other side of the house, we have some paper cuts on the wall. Lots of families do use paper cuts on their door to invite happiness, prosperity and luck. And of course, we also have qi pao, the Chinese long dress, which is a type of traditional feminine wear. Its equivalent would be kimono in Japan. Along the way, I also saw a piece of garment that used to make qi pao. But here it shows the painting called Along the River during the Qingming Festival. And that is the goddess of the Chinese art. Everyone knows it. Later, I find somewhere to hide from the rain. And of course, taking an aggressively tourist selfie when I've got a chance. At the top, we are overlooking the museum and I had a bit of fun playing with the door. They all look super, super special. Also, on my way back, I spotted an interesting wooden chair and I'm pretty sure that it was carved out from a trunk. And as I sat there waiting for the rain to stop, I noticed a few gigantic rocks as well as loads of bonsai trees. It wasn't the first time I noticed them. Last year, the government refurbished the park near my parents' house and they put loads of stuff in it. And that made me furious because I was so used to enjoying the parks that are more minimalist, that looks more like a park, like the ones I saw when I lived abroad. And I didn't understand why they can't leave the greens alone. But inside the Liang Garden, the so-called stuff is everywhere. Outside of every house, inside a garden, surrounding the lake, in the middle of the lake. 
and then loads of bonsai trees as well. So I consulted Baidu, the Chinese Google. This is how Chinese people think about feng shui. We like to harmonize the environment using architecture, plants and rocks to create a sense of closeness and oneness between people and the environment. So that's a part of the Chinese aesthetic I didn't register. I spent the rest of the time wandering around the garden, soaking in this quiet and peaceful atmosphere. China went through a lot of development over the last few decades. It already made me feel like this version of China is no longer real. But if you pay attention, what's quintessentially Chinese never really left us. For example, looking at this interior of a traditional family house, we still have it in my parents' house. And this is a cake mold. And in the past, people use it to shape pastries like mooncakes. I found two of these in my mother's kitchen. I left the garden at five and decided to take a stroll around the area. Everything you are seeing now is super, super Cantonese. And it's also like visiting the China in its 1930s. Even the kind of shops I bought my breakfast when I was at school. I have drifted away from my own culture as I explored different parts of the world. So much that I never felt a true sense of belonging anymore. And revisiting the Liang Garden reminded me of the things that showed a part of who I am and where I come from. So thank you, the Liang family. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this trip like I did. And thank you for spending the time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.